Before UK rapper Lowski would become one of his country's most promising new performers, he was born Jarrell O'Connor on May 6, 1999 and grew up out on Kennings Way, a brutal stretch of South London located in Kennington that the man himself once described the vice as, There's a lot of poverty in it. It's the streets. It's not nice to grow up in, but it's what I do in it. I didn't really have a choice when I was growing up. As a kid, Jarrell was a huge movie fanatic and he especially loved any film starring Adam Sandler or Chris Tucker. He'd watch those classics with his two siblings on his father's side of the family, a little sister and a kid brother, both of whom he's quite close with, which is similar to the relationship he has with his parents, including his father, former Brixton rapper Ty Nizzy. Despite having a father in the biz, Jarrell didn't grow up dreaming of becoming a rapper. Instead, he initially sought out a career as a professional football player. Now that's soccer to us uncivilized folk here in North America. Meanwhile, his earliest creative outlet was his love for drawing, which he practiced often in the hectic halls of Lillian Bayless Secondary School, which his favorite classes were religious studies and history. Over the years, however, things would change. To begin with, Jarrell incurred an injury that put his playing days on ice, and he was eventually dropped from the team. With his dreams of becoming a professional athlete now dashed, Jarrell fell in with a bad crowd around his local neighborhood Hood and got caught up in the trappings of the hood. I wouldn't say I'm living, I just knew like what I'm around is scary. I think like the first person, the first death I saw was probably like, how old was um, Terms? Like I was probably about seven or something. I looked out my window, I see someone die. Over the next few years, he'd bear witness to a whole lot of violence. Like the time he had a gun held against his head by a group of older boys at the age of only 12 years old. During testimony at a recent trial, Lowski would reflect on this event from his past and inform those gathered at the court what he went through telling them, when I told the police about the gun to my head, nothing really happened, so I didn't feel like they could help in any way. Having realized how little local authorities cared about the plight of people living in his own neighborhood, things only got worse from there. Two years later, at the age of 14, Jarrell was forced by older boys into the life of drug dealing. He explained during the course of the trial, we all had to go up to the country to sell drugs. If you don't agree with what's going on, you can't not do what you're told. You don't have a choice. Shortly thereafter, on September 4th, 2014, Jarrell would be arrested while traveling in a car in Andover, Hampshire, for being in possession of heroin and crack cocaine with intent to supply. According to reports, Jarrell had been instructed to bank the drugs inside of himself, but instead of doing so, he kept them hidden in his pants, which is where the police eventually found them. So it went kind of downhill, like I got recalled back to prison. And then, like while I was inside, the song that I made, was like going off. After two bids that totaled approximately a year of his life in youth custody for drug and weapon related charges, Jarrell would finally begin to succeed in something outside of the streets, music. I've always been known in my batch, hardest younger in the wood and that's a fact, look. But they don't wanna know the team. Only don't ask cash and they don't wanna know the dream. With his dad being a former rapper, Jarrell had been toying with music since he was very young somewhere around the age of 11, but it wasn't something he ever took seriously until after the misguided years of his youth. Like, how am I gonna get money? How am I gonna, how am I gonna live? Music was like the only way to be good in life and earn from it, do you know what I mean? So like, literally without music, I don't know what I would do. When he was finally ready to change his life around, drill music had begun to pop off, which meant that Jarrell and his like-minded friends found themselves inspired by young Chicago artists who were out there making a name for themselves. He would later describe what drew him into this new sound by telling Concord, 50 Cent is hard, but we don't relate to him as much. Chicago drill artists were young and in the streets like us, so we related to them more. Oh, they're only 15 and 16, they're just like us. Starting around 2012, Jarrell launched his career as a performer under the moniker of Lil Nizzy, a reference to his father. But by the time he started taking the prospect of becoming a performer more seriously, three years later, he adopted the name of Lowski, given to him by a friend, and joined the Kennington-based crew known as the Harlem Spartans. While Lowski didn't appear on many of his newfound crew's biggest hits, he soaked up the experience and soon found himself recording classics of his own. Between 2016 and 2017, he'd release a string of bangers including Teddy Buckshot, DJ Khaled, and Hazards, all of which would garner him an increasing presence in the UK rap scene, thanks to his one-of-a-kind mix of sick flows and cocky, surefire charisma. Hazards in particular would wind up garnering more attention than anyone thought it would, and this initial success would transform into something deeper when it suddenly struck Lowski that through music he not only discovered his true vocation but a means to spark positive change by sharing his story with others. He explained the Concord, there's never been someone from my area that's been known. 
No one has come from Kennington to be something good, something great. He also refused to confine himself to simply one music style, despite the massive success that he had found with Drill. In 2018, he turned more towards trap and Afro swing beats by unleashing one of his biggest songs ever, Forrest Gump, in April of that year. So what made you like decide, you know what, I'm gonna do something different? Um, like, enough rappers, they get like this for doing one thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then they're still loved for doing what they do. Yeah, of course. With man, it's like, oh, you're changing. So they're mad, but then some people are still feeling it. So mm. You just got to try whatever, really. Do you know what I mean? That would become the first track Lowski ever actually sat down the pen, with the rest of his early stuff being largely freestyle based. Now that he was redefining how he made music, he also found himself ready to unleash his debut mixtape entitled Call Me Loose. Featuring popular singles like DJ Khaled 2, the tape would peak at the number 44 spot on the UK album's chart, and even lead to Drake pulling up to one of Lowski's live shows at the Forum, where he would later inform the UK standout that his music had helped inspire the Six God's own Scorpion. Yeah, so we wouldn't have gotten Scorpion if it wasn't for Lowski. The Drake thing, yeah, it felt like it was like, kind of fake. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, what? Like, this is fake. Someone must have his account or something. But he keeps like messaging me, like, Comment in the stuff and I'm thinking raw. Like. Then in March of 2019, Lowski would drop his second mixtape, Mad Move, in an even more commercially successful project that climbed higher in the charts than its predecessor and boasted singles like No Cap. But just as Lowski was on the precipice of achieving mainstream success like never before, he found himself in yet another sticky legal situation. In April of 2019, Lowski was arrested when police found a small loaded revolver in a sock, hidden underneath the front passenger seat of an Uber that he had booked under a false name. During during the trial that would unfold, Lowski would tell the court that the day prior, he had arranged to meet a cannabis dealer. Now, according to Lowski, the dealer had already served him almost a dozen times before, but this time, things went sideways. Once Lowski got into a car with the dealer at a pre-arranged meeting place, Lowski was under the impression that he was being kidnapped, probably because the dealer not only locked the car doors, but stuck a gun in his face as well, usually a telltale sign that things have taken a turn for the worst. Lowski would claim that this drug dealer then blackmailed him into holding onto the firearm until the weapon could be delivered to a drop-off point the following day. Of course, the gun never made it there after Lowski's arrest. I'm in jail, bro. It's not, I'm not happy. I don't think I'm comfortable. Yeah, but that doesn't say that it's to comfort you. No, I don't want to be comfortable. Bro. I want to get out. I don't want to be like, what? I don't want to be happy. What the hell? I'm mad. I'm in jail. Let me go. The trial would result in a hung jury in May of 2021 after the gathered jurors found themselves incapable of unanimously agreeing on Lowski's guilt or innocence. In fact, they couldn't even come to a majority. Despite this unexpected twist, while spending the better part of late 2019 and early 2020 figuring out his legal woes, Lowski had all the time he needed to formulate what he wanted to accomplish next with his music career, and soon got back into the swing of crafting some heavy drill beats. He kicked things off with his first release of the year, aptly titled Allegedly, and then continued to make further waves with standout tracks like Training Day and Slay. The peak of his return would hit with the Mizer Mac assisted track On Me, which soon became a fan favorite thanks to its incredible lyrical flourish. Similarly, successful collaborations would arrive with Blanco on Anglo-Saxon and the popcon assisted Avengers, all of which set the scene for Lowski's debut studio album, Music Trial and Trauma, The Drill Story which dropped in November of 2020. Loosely inspired by two iconic projects, Dizzy Rascal's Boy in the Corner and Giggs' rap classic, Walk in the Park. Lowski envisioned his debut album as a chance to define the genre of drill in the UK market forever and to live up to his title as the top boy of drill. He came damn close to accomplishing this too when the project peaked at the 39th spot on the UK album's chart. Who Lowski was when he was 15, 17, or even 20 is not who he is now at the age of 23. Today, he's only all too well aware of the opportunity that he has in front of him in terms of moving his career forward by showcasing his music to be capable of growth, depth, and possibility. And while his career to this point may be marked by a roller coaster of ups and downs, Lowski understands that to truly accomplish what he expects from himself, then the music needs to come first. Which is probably why the only thing he told us he's concerned about right now is having a number one album when we asked him what his career goals are moving forward. He also wanted to promise his legion of fans that new music is already well on its way. Well, you already know what I'm gonna say, we're just gonna have to wait and see. I mean, after all, this has been before they were famous, but before you head off, just ask yourself this one question. 
Would you rather have one gigantic hit song that everybody knows, but then spend the rest of your life in prison or spend your entire career out of jail, but never have one massive mainstream success? Kind of a dumb question, but whatever. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, turn on your notifications to make sure that you never miss an episode, all that good stuff. And if you want to check out other recent entries in this series, then search for our looks into the come ups of the Adrian Harding, Nodicas, and Hip Boy. My name is Clyde Smith, and I will see you guys in another video.